I do not come into alignment with organizations or foundations in the sense that I publicly virtue signal it and pander to it because of this one reason right now. I do not trust man. Do you hear me? I do not trust man. I trust God. I come up under the movement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? It's tried and true. It will not fail nor falter. It will not decay. It is eternal. That is a movement I will get under. I have to. I want to. But I'm very leery of coming up under any organization or foundation outside of that. Why? Because you don't know who's leading it. You don't know who's funding it. And you don't know what they're doing. You think the truth is all out there in the world? Come on. I always do my investigation work with that kind of stuff. If somebody says, you should support this organization, I say, okay, well, I want to go look at the founder. I want to see the board. I want to see the money. I want to understand who's funding it. And then when I see who's funding it, I want to see what else they're funding. And if you take the time, and I understand it's a busy world, you might be a mom, uh, a parent, a, a father, whatever. You might have three jobs you're working right now in your game. I don't have time. I don't have time to look. And you want to know what? The world is betting on the fact that you don't have time to look into anything. That's why we're easily deceived. My people will perish for lack of knowledge. Do you think that's just talking about the Bible? Look for yourself. It's important. When I started doing the investigative work, I am like that with my Bible, like the Bereans, like it talks about in the New Testament. They searched the scriptures for all things to see what they were hearing was correct. You better be doing, if you're going to give an ear to anything in this world going on, which you should, you should be hearing on what's, you should not be ignorant. But if you're going to give ear, you better give time and you better fact check everything. And then you better look at the sources that you're utilizing to fact check everything because that matters too. And at the end of the day, if you can't come to a point where you understand what to believe or not what to believe, you go to your Bible. Like I said, remember the lens? I can't see without these glasses. You hold everything up to here. If it does not align, throw it out. I had one time somebody say this one organization was so great, blah, blah, blah. And after I looked into it, the organization actively, actively pours money into the religion of universalism. And I was like, huh? Have you looked into the people who are funding this? They're universalists. They believe in a one world religion. And they believe that Jesus should be done away with because it's too controversial. There's one God. That's what they say. And, but you wouldn't know that by looking at the organization. You've got to pay attention to what's going on. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves, remember? So, with that being said... What happens is you are going to be made to feel, and I'm reading off my notes right now, as if you are the minority or that you're isolated and inferior. If you don't agree with what's popular in the world, and come on guys, this is nothing new under the sun. I don't know how old you are, but I'm 33 years old. And I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of things and I've learned one thing like this. If you don't agree with culture, if you don't agree with present day world views, you will be labeled a bigot, you'll be labeled hateful, and there's nothing new under the sun. So please don't be afraid of that. Expect it. Oh, that sounds encouraging, Amy. Well, did Jesus not tell us what to expect? I mean, why are we glorifying persecution anyways? I see a lot of people take a stand for Christ and then they get on social media and they're like, oh my gosh, everybody, I'm getting all these hate, hateful messages and people are threatening my life and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wait, why are we, I'm not going to coddle you. Good job. You stood up for what you knew was right and you were hated for it. So was Jesus. And his message is still being proclaimed out throughout the earth today. Good job. Well done, good and faithful servant. Good job. But we get so caught up in that. Why? Because the world knows that it's really hard to go against a narrative. It's really hard 
to be an example when we're afraid of being the minority of something. Okay, well, here, here's my charge for you. Ready for this? The Bible says that, I wrote it right here. The Bible says, narrow is the way and few find it. Narrow is the way and few find it. That's a minority. That's a small amount. That's a remnant. We're afraid of being the minority. Well, if you're a Christian, I have to tell you this, but when it comes to what's going on in the world, you will be a minority at times. But I want to tell you who else is a minority. The devil. The devil took one third of the angels with him to earth to oppose and rebel against God. One third of those angels went with them. That means two third were still staying with God. Okay, so the devil and his demonic forces are minority. So do not be afraid, do not be fearful. Greater is he that's in you than anything in this world. I know it doesn't feel like it at times, but it's true. And I put on here, last but not least, the problem for them, and what I, what I mean by them is the world, is we are not afraid. And I don't care if you have to say that to yourself over and over and over again. I am not afraid. I will not let my heart be troubled. For greater is he that's in me than anybody who tries to persuade or push me in this world. If you stand by this, you guys, if you stand on this every day, you stand on the word of God every day, you don't have to fear anything. Anything. So, 